Ooh. Now, we all know who the most broken champions are, don't we? Katarina, Riven, pretty much any champion with Conqueror. But there are some champions flying under the radar, and these champions are still incredibly powerful, but they are not picked or banned nearly as much as the others. So in today's video, guys, the Jizz is going to bring you the 10 most underrated low-key broken picks of the upcoming 1121 patch. And because I'm such a nice guy, I'm going to give you the runes and core items for each, and maybe a tip as well if you're lucky. Now, before we start, you can tell me in the comments which champion do you think is the most underrated, and yeah, let's get into it. Now, we're going to start by talking about five junglers who are flying flying under the radar for 1121 and at the moment as well and all of these picks you have heard of I'm sure but we're going to start by talking about Viego because at the moment Viego has really been forgotten about as one of the strongest champions and kind of rightfully so he's really not that great in lane and in the jungle he's kind of okay but he's a shade of his former self but next patch because your Q's AD ratio is going up the W self slow is going down and your R's crit ratio is now 100% for jungle Viego it's going to be a much better patch now we do have to think about the conqueror nerf as well so the buff duration for each stack is two seconds and shorter, but for Viego, because you can stack Conqueror very quickly, this really shouldn't be an issue. So these are certainly nice buffs, and what's interesting is the R crit ratio change, which might encourage players to build the 3am Viego build a lot more, which involves Shield Bow, Essence Reaver, and Infinity Edge. This build gives you 60% crit, of course, and Infinity Edge's passive works because you have 60% at that point. Shield Bow as well is a really nice burst item because of the sustain and survivability it gives you, which are very important when you play Viego jungle, and you're still getting Sheen in the form of Essence Reaver. So that's going to be the build I recommend, and you can see this on your screen now, even though most Viego players will probably still build Divine Sundra, Bork, and then Sterich Gaze or something like that, but it's boring. Now, in terms of your runes, the first tree is very standard with Conqueror, but as your secondary tree, take Footwear and then take Cosmic Insight. Because Ravenous Hunter is nerfed again, so it's 0.3 down in the Omnivamp department, it's really not worth taking anymore, and because there isn't really another rune in that tree that makes that much sense, Footwear and Cosmic Insight is definitely going to be the best. So next patch, guys, Viego in the jungle, definitely going to be one of the underrated picks and definitely one of the more interesting ones. Now, the next jungler I want to draw your attention to, guys, is Vi, and more specifically, Hail of Blades Vi. Now, this champion actually has a very solid win rate across the board, so in every elo, but for some reason, she isn't really picked that much still. She's super easy to play, she has good clear, good ganks, and her level 6 is one of the best in the game. So why isn't she picked more? Well, it's quite simple. She's just very one-dimensional. She's the ultimate headbutt champion, and you can get kited around like crazy by good players. But it doesn't really matter that much, especially in lower elos, because all you need to to do is land one Q or just land your ultimate, which is impossible not to land, and you can wreak havoc. Now, in terms of your build, Divine Sundra with Sheen is very important to go as your first item, and it's also interesting when you pair Divine Sundra with Lucidity Boots. I know most fires are probably going to go Steel Caps or Merc Treads, which no doubt are viable boots, but Lucidity Boots gives you cooldown, which works so well with Vi, and you kind of need ability haste against teams that can cut you around. Now, after your Divine Sundra, Steris Gage, and then as your third item, it really depends what the enemy team comp is up to. So if the enemy team is tanky, Black Cleaver. If the enemy team has a lot of attack damage, Death Stance. You can go Thor Mail as well. Guardian's Angel is another good choice. It really depends. But just make sure you can see this on your screens now. You are going Hail of Blades. With Sudden Impact, I will collect your Relentless Hunter. And then is your secondary tree, Tribe, and then Alacrity. And if any of you are playing the champions we recommend in this video, let us know in the comments how strong you actually think these picks are. Now, next up is the jungler who also is not picked enough. Even though he's been nerfed and Gore Drinker has been nerfed, Olaf is still incredibly good, but you have to pick him in the right situation. So if the enemy team has CC, Olaf becomes so much more valuable. And with Conqueror and Gore Drinker, if you think of Fiora, if you think of Riven, if you think of Aatrox, this combination of Keystone and Mythic is too powerful to ignore. Now Olaf, because of the Conqueror nerf, might get hit, but you stack it so quickly anyway, just like Viego, that it shouldn't really matter. And let me just say guys, about Olaf in higher elo at the moment has a 54% win rate. This really is not going to change the next patch, and he's always going to have application because every enemy team composition is going to have some sort of crowd control, and that is where Olaf can really shine. Now, after Gore Drinker, Steris Gage is a must as your second item, and just like Vi, it really depends for your third major item. Death Stand, Spirit Visage, Thornmail, Randall's Omen, Guardian's Angel. But I do just want to make a point again for cooldown boots on Olaf. I know it sounds crazy, but trust me, guys, ability haste on these bruises is huge. So if you are fed enough in your games, make sure to go Lucidity Boots, but it is going to be more consistent if you go Steel Caps, especially if you're not having the best game. Now, your runes very standard with Conqueror and Last Stand because this works so well with your passive. And as your secondary tree, take footwear and approach velocity. And in your minor runes, make sure you take two adaptive force, not attack speed. This is very important. Now, I've got two more junglers I want to talk about, guys, for the upcoming 1121. And the first of these is Evelyn, who, a bit like Vi, has a very good win rate in every single elo. And thanks to that buff in 1117 that saw your ultimate's cooldown reduced by 20 seconds at rank 1, Evelyn's kind of weakish early game has been helped out a lot. And this is really the reason why Evelyn's win rate has gone up. And she's also one of the
the best solo queue junglers just because you can 1v9. She's amazing at snowballing, and if you get one kill in the early game, it's pretty much GG at that point. Now, in terms of your items, guys, it's kind of interesting. Rocket Belt is obviously the mythic of choice because of the magic penetration that works so well with you, and the active is useful as well to gap close, and you want to pair this with sorcerer shoes, but then it gets interesting. Getting Magi second is actually the most popular build, and this is because as Evelyn, once you do get Magi, you will have your stealth, and it's very easy just to roam around the map unseen and pick up kills and assists like no tomorrow. After this, again, it really depends what the enemy team composition is building. If they have lots of magic resist, get a Void Staff. If they don't, Death Cap. But if you want a bit more survivability, perhaps, then get a Banshee's Veil. Again, it really depends on what the carries on the enemy team are building and what you need to beat them. Now, in terms of your runes, very standard, electrocute with inspiration, two adaptive force, and you cannot go wrong. But just one tip, guys, I would be a little bit careful picking Evelyn if your team has legit no CC. Evelyn needs crowd control to really work, especially in the early to mid games, so look out for that in champ select. Now, the last jungler, guys, is a lot easier to play than Evelyn, and to be honest, probably more reliable. And this champion is Warwick, who, by the way, at the moment, has a 58% win rate in Master and Above. 58%, right? And this is because there's a very interesting build at the moment involving Gore Drinker. That's right, not Divine Sunderer, Gore Drinker, followed by Titanic Hydra, and then Thorn Mail. But unfortunately, because Gore Drinker is getting nerfed, Divine Sunderer with Titanic Hydra and then Thorn Mail is probably going to be the best build. So this is what I'm going to recommend. But again, nothing is set in stone before we actually see the patch. Now, why is Divine Sunderer so good? Well, simply because it has a sheen in there. And for Warwick, the spell blade is very easy to proc with your Q. And also because of the hybrid damage in your Q, this also takes advantage from the hybrid damage from Divine Sunderer. Now, Titanic Hydra, this spike is also as good as Divine Sunderer, simply because of the HP you get and the cleave passive. This works so well with your W, and it's pretty much impossible to duel a Warwick with this setup. Now, in terms of your runes, press the attack is by far the best keystone, so make sure you go this. In terms of your secondary tree, there are a couple of options, but Celerity and Water Walking give you the movement speed you need to get around the map, especially in the early game when your ganking really isn't the best. Now, in terms of your actual early game, guys, one tip I want to give you on Warwick is to go Red, Raptors, and then into Gromp. This is going to give you level 3, and you can just gank straight away. Of course, you can full clear, but anyone can do this. So Red, Raptors, Romp, hit level 3, get on the map ASAP, and gank lanes, and be an influence. Now, we're going to go to the top lane here, guys, and talk about the most underrated top lane champion. Now, this champion was actually the best top lane champion at the start of the season, and he has been nerfed an awful lot. But Wukong is still proving to be one of the best top laners. And let me just say as well, guys, that because Darius is now a heck of a lot better, Wukong is like the best counter pick to him. So if you want to smash a Darius in lane, pick Wukong. But Wukong does incredibly well pretty much into anyone. He's still got all the tools he needs to dominate the laning phase. He's got that Q auto attack reset. He's got the attack speed in his E. He's got his passive and the arm and this gives him. And also a free dash and a bit of survivability in his W. Oh, and two ultimates. And just like Olaf and Viego, the concrete change shouldn't really impact Wukong just because you can stack it so quickly. But for your secondary tree, make sure to take bone plating and unflinching. And in terms of your items, Divine Sunderer is definitely going to be the best mythic of choice. Then you want to follow this with Black Cleaver, the armor reduction at the movement speed, so useful. And then for your third item, it really depends. Again, Steris Gage, Death Stance, even Kenpunk Chainsaw can be built if the enemy team has lots of healing. Now, the next two champions we're going to talk about, guys, reside in the mid lane. Well, one of them does. One of them is actually a top laner, but he's actually better played in the mid lane. And despite their recent nurse the Singed in the mid lane in high elo at the moment, where he is actually getting picked, no joke, he has a 58% win rate. And it's kind of similar to playing Rumble mid because you have so much pushing power. And then your goal is really just to run around the map with Predator and win the game that way. So it's actually less about the mid lane, though your setup can be very scary if you W and E the enemy champion for your jungler to gank. That's what your playstyle is really about, just perma shoving ways and then roaming around the map. So as you can see, Predator, this is the keystone we're taking with Relentless Hunter down the bottom, very important for the movement speed. And then in your secondary tree, again, we're trying to capitalize on this idea. With Celerity and Water Walking just like Warwick, this gives you the roaming potential. And in your minor ends, make sure to take two Adaptive Force. Now, in terms of your items for this playstyle, make sure you rush a Rylai's Crystal Scepter. Now, you can rush Rocket Belt, but it's just less useful because it only has one application because of its active. Rylai's will always be useful because of the slow, and it works on any enemy you hit. Even minions, it helps to proxy because it slows the wave down, so you can just kill them with your Q. So Rylai's first, and then follow this with a Rift Maker. Now, the reason we go Rift Maker over Hextech Rocket Belt is because Singe is actually like one of the squishiest champions in the game, believe it or not. So when you go Hextech Rocket Belt, you're still very killable. Rift Maker gives you more HP and the actual dueling potential to fight it out with your opponents. Now, after that, it's really up to you. Demonic Embrace, Morella Nomicon, Zonya's Hourglass. Again, whatever item is going to give you the best chance of beating the enemy team, that is the one you want to go for. And in terms of your summoner spells, guys, lots of people might want to go Ghost on Singe, but the best at the moment is actually taking Flash with TP. Now, the other mid laner I want to talk about much more traditionally 
traditional this one, so don't worry. This is Victor, who's really been flying under the radar, and probably for the right reasons because he's been nerfed ever since preseason, and his items have been nerfed as well. So if we're talking Seeker's Arm Guard, Lich Bane, but he still has a very solid win rate, hovering around 51, 52% in every single elo, and even with Phase Rush being nerfed, they're still proving to be the best keystone for it. But what lots of Victors do, guys, is that they take D-Ring and they take Domination as their secondary tree. I don't want you doing this. I want you taking Biscuits with Cosmic Insight in your secondary tree, and this is going to force you to start with Corrupting Potion. This helps your laning phase so much because as Victor in the early lane, you can go Oom very quickly. So this is giving you all the HP and mana sustain you need to survive the early game to get your boost, to get your Lost Chapter, and so on. Now, in terms of your items, Lost Chapter in the Ludens Tempest, this is your first major item. And really, you want to pair this with Sorcerer Shoes if you have the gold. But if you don't have the gold for Sorcerer Shoes, you just have gold for Lucidity Boots. Get Lucidity Boots, no worries. And at some point during this early game, guys, you want to be getting a tier. This will then build into Archangels, and you want to finish this after your Mythic. Then after your Staff, you can get Zonya's Hourglass, you can get Death Cap, you can get Cosmic Drive or Lich Bane. Again, it really depends on how fed you are and what the enemy team is up to. And another reason why I really like Victor is just because he's a very solid blind pick as well. He can struggle against champions who outrange him, but still, it should be easy enough to survive these matches, and even against scary assassins like maybe Zed or Katarina, he does well because he can actually match their burst with his own. Just be sure to save your W and your Q because of the shield for their main source of damage. Now we're into the last two champions guys for this countdown, and these are both AD carries. Who's hyped? And the first of these isn't actually an AD carry. This is an AP champion who's played in the bot lane, and this is Ziggs. Now Ziggs has been nerfed a lot recently, right? So lots of people are not playing him as much, but here's the thing guys, he's still very, very good in the bot lane, and you're still seeing him pick to world. And with your supporter who hopefully has CC, so that's one tip I give you, pick six if you have a CC support, landing your bombs, landing your mines, it becomes so easy. Now in terms of your items, pretty much the same, right? Leandra's Anguish, and you want to build on the tier you bought in the early game into an Archangel Staff, and after this, just like Victor, it depends. Sonja's Hourglass, Morella Nomicon, Rabadon's Death Cap, Horizon Focus can work, and in terms of your runes, these haven't really changed either. You want to be taking Comet with Scorch, which gives you a bit more power in that laning phase, and then for your Inspiration Tree, Footwear with Biscuit Delivery. Just make sure to take two Adaptive Force and no attack speed in your minor runes. Now the final champion guys who's going to be underrated next patch. So if she is open as an AD carry, picking her is definitely a very good decision. And this is Sivir. But there is one build and room page in particular guys that I want to give you that is having so much success in high reloads. So it starts with Dark Harvest, then Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection. And yes, we have to go Ravenous, even though this is nerfed, but it's still fine. And then as your secondary tree, we're taking Sorcery with Mana Flow Band and then Celerity. That's right, Celerity, which sounds a bit weird, but movement speed is such an important stat on Sivir. So it definitely has value. You, but the real MVP of this page is Mana Flow Band. This gives you the mana sustain you need during the laning phase, but just be sure in your games to still start with Tira the Goddess as your starting item. Then we're going to build Mana Mune as our first item into Dustblade Dractar and then Saruda's Grudge. This Lethality Poke Ability Haze setup is still the best way to go. I know some Sivers out there will go Lethal Tempo with Gale Force and Essence Reaver, more of an on hit crit build, but trust me guys. But even though you should have the mana tools you need to not run Oom, it's still very important to manage that mana, guys. So don't just use your W for the sake of it. Don't use your Q for the sake of it. Use it if the enemy champ is a CC'd. If they're going for a CS, you want to use their spells when they're going to have a high percentage of actually working. And also be sure to save your spell shield for the major engage from the enemy bot lane. So those are the 10 most underrated picks, guys, for 1121. I would highly recommend picking these if they're open. And if you did enjoy the video, please remember to leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until tomorrow's upload. Oh, I forgot to mention the Game Weep website at gameweep.com. Linked in the description and comment section. But legit, guys, if you want to improve how to play your champion, how to play your lane perfectly, how to play your role perfectly. We have all the resources you need. So get that exclusive access to our challenge to take content by signing up. And until tomorrow's upload, this has been the Jizz. Bye.